somebody uh, you know very early during my recovery days after the tragedy i was very conscious about this voice and uh, you know somebody said no manisha it is you know a voice that sounds like two sand papers rubbing in gay abandon <laughs> And so from then on you know I started feeling good about it. This was on the 23rd of February 2010. At about uh, 3 o'clock 3:15 uh, so there was a short circuit in the basement of our building Carlton Towers it's a seven floor uh, building so by the time I could react to respond I see a black whirlwind of smoke just coming rushing you know so the immediate thing was to close the all the doors possible and not let the smoke in but of course that it doesn't work it didn't work in seconds the whole floor was pitch dark pitch dark uh, you know we started coughing coughing excruciating cough all we wanted was one one fresh breath so then you know so my thoughts were you know probably god has a plan and that's why he's doing this you know he wants to take me away i and i was was worried about both my children and you know he's got them covered you know there is something behind this finally i mean i think all the oxygen level and everything had totally dropped uh, the organs uh, stopped functioning with lack of oxygen and you know i just kind of collapsed uh, on the floor and people are coming uh, rescue firemen were coming asking yaar na idara yaar na idara but there's no voice there's no voice to say and they couldn't see in the dark uh, thing and when he left oh my god i thought oh that is it i couldn't hear the voice anymore i said come there no, there's no chance and this is it no but then soon another voice came and then i don't know from where the strength came and the i i raise my hand and touch that person and then he looked down and then he just carried me like that and i counted every step in all the seven floors till we reached down and i mean yeah, there are pictures of that you know and i thought okay that's it i'll be just taken to a doctor a couple of medication i'll be back home i was very happy and so soon as we reached the hospital i don't remember what happened after that doctors took a very long 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 time to figure out what happened and nobody knew what happened to me nobody knew either because everybody else was getting discharged i was only one in hospital for in the icu for three solid months on ventilator apparently what has happened a whole lot of uh, smoke it's the most poisonous gas that was emitted carbon monoxide so what it has done it has constructed one of the vocal cord is collapsed and uh, the wind pipe and the vocal cords have come together so they didn't know i was able to breathe they used to all the time make a hole put the tube make a hole put the tube take off the tube and you know so it, it was totally another battlefield the hospitalization because the doctors didn't know what was happening i had a pipe inside my mouth pipe inside the nose and pipe here Oh, there were jars kept beside my bed to take out the smoke and that was the most excruciating thing that there would be a machine like a claw which would be put in here to take out suck out the smoke from my lungs after the ninth month of hospitalization where i had to just take a decision and say that's it the air i breathe it doesn't get filtered you know so there's, there's a lot of alignment that i have to work on every day so meditation has been my saving grace and it 
the night, I, I love to sit beside trees. So, you know, that, that's why I used to cough a lot initially, you know, and it, it used to make a lot of noise, the coughing. And the lungs weren't stronger with then, and that started attracting dogs. They would come around me, and then, you know, so then I, I started liking it. They would just sit beside you know, so, so in gratitude for their presence and you know so I started feeding them so from one it became four and today there's close to 50 of them they rescued me while I was struggling to be a part of this real world you know because I until I started uh, working again I didn't realize I've lost something very precious You know, and also we don't realize, you know, we hold our breath to produce audibility. So. <sighs> On a lighter note, whenever I want to use bad words, or when I'm angry with somebody, I go, hands free. <laughs> For me, uh, the situation was I didn't have an option to sit and sulk as soon as I can. Being the only parent to my children, I just wanted to get up and take care of them, take care of our home, it all had gone berserk, uh, me being away. Because of that, you know, that kind of a distraction, you know, somewhere and, you know, I wanted to use all my power, although I was just 26 kilos when I came out of the hospital and I wasn't strong like how I used to be. So, you know, but uh, because of using that power, this voice is there. You know, calling out my pet and calling out my children, talking to them, and you know, so yeah, all that the distraction definitely worked. I've seen a lot of people when I go and give talks, sitting and crying, and the audience, uh, you know, uh, I've seen that. Whereas for me, it's not. It's not difficult. You know, I mean, or I've got used to it and, you know, I've kind of, there's a good rhythm in me and I'm able to manage well. And of course, uh, you know, where, I've, where I am today, what, what uh, you know, uh, this experience with death and the recovery, recovery is every day, uh, has made me, you know, I want to offer this, this as a hope, you know, as a, as a voice. To somebody who focus on your breath and breathe, you know. And there are there are how many? I mean, so many trillion cells in our body, and they all, you know, they all are craving for our own attention. You know, so first thing to calm down is to breathe and imagine that breath going into your heart or into your gut. I mean, there is nothing, nothing more precious than getting one single breath. All of us desired one breath that day. So, please don't take that for granted, is what I have to say.